And all God's people said, Amen. Well, our God is in the setup business. She had no idea what I was about to preach. And I sure had no idea what she was about to say. And, uh, but I thank God that He's putting it all together. And I'm kind of like Brother David. The first night I came riding out here, I come looking for a tent. But I thank God I found revival. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. John's Gospel, chapter number 10. John's Gospel, chapter number 10. We'll begin our reading in verse number 22. To kindly set up to where we'll end up at verse number 22. John 9 and John 10 really go together. In John chapter number 9 is the account of where the Lord Jesus and His disciples come upon the man who's been blind from birth. The disciples come to the Lord and, and they're not really concerned with the man's need. They want to know what caused his need. Said, was it his sin? Was his mother and daddy's sin? And uh, boy, the Lord Jesus just really begins to break it down to them. And uh, he, he is about to work a miracle in this man's life. But the working of a miracle is always so lost and, uh, lost and confused can receive a message even out of that miracle. And, and you know the story of the man, the Lord Jesus. He makes the, the spits on the ground. He makes the salve. He puts it on his eyes. He tells him to go wash in the pool. The man comes away from there with his sight rejoicing and seeing. And then you find the religious crowds, you find the Pharisees. You know why they're Pharisees, don't you? Because they're not fair, you see. And then you find those Sadducees. You know the reason they're Sadducees, because they're so sad, you see. They may have even been a Canaanite around there. They raised Cain at night, amen. And uh, maybe some Canaanites here tonight. Maybe some Pharisees, maybe some Sadducees, but these folk... Uh, they were just, uh, they wasn't excited about the work that the Lord Jesus had done. They were concerned because it was done on the Sabbath. And, and boy, they just used it as another reason to doubt the Lord Jesus and to, and to not believe in the Lord Jesus. They bring the man uh, before them in John chapter number 9 and they say, Give God the praise. Uh, uh, said, We know this man, Jesus, is a sinner. And boy, I love verse 25 of John chapter 9. What this old blind boy had to say, he answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, and now I can see. Hallelujah, glory to God. And uh, boy, the Lord just uses that to move into John chapter number 10. Uh, he makes uh, the message on the good shepherd. He goes into that with that teaching. And then he goes uh, through part of that message, and then we wind up at verse 22. If you found your way there, say amen. amen. The Word of God says, And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. Here we have religion going on at its strongest, another one of the feast. And here they are gathered around the temple. Verse 23 says, Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him, saying unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Something very interesting that stepped out to me right here in this. Here we find no doubt religion or business as usual going on inside the temple. But according to what John records here, Jesus wasn't in the temple. He was out under the porch. Amen. He was out where those didn't feel like they had a place in the temple. He was out there to where those who were in need. And it said that they surrounded Him. And it said they came to Him with a question. How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. And I want you to look at verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Once again, verse 24, the question they put to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. And then that, that Jesus answered them. For a little while tonight, I want to preach on this thought, the power of plain preaching. Amen. The power of plain preaching. I want to be just as plain with you as I can be tonight. As surely as in that day, there were those standing under the porch who had surrounded Jesus there with a lot of doubts looking for an answer. But the thing about these folk, they were using doubts as an excuse not to follow Christ. They were using their doubt as an excuse not to believe the Lord Jesus. But when Jesus began to preach a message of some plain preaching, He told them in verse 25, I told you, and ye believe not. What the Lord Jesus was saying, it's not your doubt that's going to keep you out of heaven. It's your disbelief that's going to keep you out of heaven. And he begins to go into this message on plain preaching. Little did these folks realize just what they were asking when they told him to tell us plainly. Don't miss the meaning of this word plainly right here. It was not that they were saying to the Lord, Speak in a way that we can understand you. It was much deeper than that. This word plainly right here carries this meaning. Speak openly to us. Speak as in view to us. In other words, they were saying speak so we can see your words or speak without any mystery. We don't want there to be any more doubt. If there's any doubters in the building tonight, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you about to come under some plain preaching. Amen. I'm talking about just go on and let the rubber meet the road. Amen. Ought not nobody be in any doubt when we leave this ground tonight. Boy, I thank God for the long-suffering grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. How great the grace of God. If you'll go through chapter 10, what a message He has already preached to them. But even as they sat under the preaching, of the Word of God. Hear me now. It's one thing to listen to preaching, but it's something else to hear preaching. Amen. There's a lot of folk listening to preaching in these days, but ain't a lot of folk hearing preaching no more. I just want to go on and give glory to God for bringing this old redneck to a place this week where they've been some folk that's been hungry to hear the preaching of the Word of God. See, if you'll hear it, honey, it'll get real in your life and you won't just be hearers but you'll be doers of the word and that's what this world needs is to see some folk doing that that they hear out of the preaching of the cross of Calvary. Boy, I love how Jesus has preached a message in chapter 10 up to verse 22. But it's almost like he realizes they've not received. uh, They're just not getting it. So he really is about to change his method of the message. No doubt he's appealed to their ears uh, in the first part of chapter 10. But now he's about to go from their ears to their eyes. And that that he's about to do, he's about to give them a picture between a shepherd and his sheep. And boy, I love what old brother Ivor Powell said about this message right here. He said, how great the grace of God. If one method of a message fails to reach a sinful heart, he tries another. He never ceases to strive with sinners until every opportunity for redemption has been fully explored. What are you saying, preacher? You may have been here ever night this week. You may have come Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. You may have listened to the Word of God but you're still filled with doubt. Well, thank God He ain't a give up on you. Amen. He's about to reach out to you tonight in some power, in some plain preaching. Jesus said, you believe not because ye are not of my sheep. In other words, he's saying there's no relationship. And since there's no relationship, there's no believing. I know a lot of folk that I've witnessed to, that I've talked to, and there's a very common statement you hear in this day, i got to see it till I believe, before I believe it. Well, honey, when it comes to Christ, 
You've got to believe it before you'll ever see it. His ways are not our ways. If you're sitting there tonight and you say, Brother Steve, I just can't figure it out. I, I don't think I can live this Christian life. I don't think I can quit my smoking. I don't think I can quit my drinking. I don't think I can quit my carousing. I, 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 you right, honey, you can't. But you're looking on the outside looking in. If you'll ever get on the inside looking out, you'll be like our sister that came tonight and said, You can't believe about this Lord that I serve. Oh no, it's not seeing equals believing, honey. It's believing equals seeing. Believing is all about relationship. See, if there's no relationship, there'll be no believing. There, there will be a life of rebellion. There'll be no obedience in your life or my life. And what plain preaching that Jesus does here in verse 25 and in verse 26, what this plain preaching is about to do, it's about to, to reveal to them the relationship between a shepherd and and his sheep. So just let me go on and get some things identified now. You say there's all kind of people here tonight, preacher. There's pretty people and ugly people. Could I get an amen? amen. There's big people and there's little people. Could I get an amen? amen? There's old people and there's young people. There's rich people and there's poor people. He's Baptist, he's Methodist, he's Pentecostal, he's Church of God, he's Church of Christ, and some of you don't even know what you are, amen. But I'm telling you this right now, I don't care what kind of title you put on your name, they better be one thing said of you. You better know what a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is. And hear me, a relationship involves two parties. You can't have one and have a relationship. It takes two, baby. That'd be a good song. Amen. <laughs> Brother Steve, what? If there's a relationship that involves two parties, somebody's got to make the first move in that relationship. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you right now, honey, you ain't never found a sheep that went a picking a shepherd, but they is a shepherd who went to pick out some sheep. Hear me tonight, honey, unless he's first chosen, then there are no sheep. Sheep don't choose the shepherd. The shepherd chooses the sheep. He says in John 15, You've not chosen me, but I've chosen you. The shepherd initiates the act of choosing. I can't stand to hear folks say, I found Jesus. No, you didn't. You wasn't looking for Jesus. Amen. He came a-looking for you. But all oh, when he finds you say, Oh, brother Steve, you want them Calvinists? No, 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 no. Don't tell me God meant for some to go to heaven and some to go to hell and man ain't got a choice in that. Hear me, honey, the good shepherd comes. He calls and what's left up to the responsibility of man is to respond to that call. To receive the shepherd or to reject the shepherd. Boy, he said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Boy, there's some power in that plain preaching. These folk come to Jesus and said, how long will you make us to doubt? They, they were blaming him for their doubts. If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. You better watch about what you ask Jesus to tell you. He'll tell you more about you and you may be ready to handle. Amen. All through the power of plain preaching. See, there's no doubt about who is a sheep. There, there's no doubt about who is a goat. Amen. Ain't nothing gathered up in here tonight, honey, but sheep and goats. That's all that's here. They sheep and goats. No doubt about it. No doubt about who's a sheep and who's a goat. And I'm just going to go and be so bold right this. You may act like you don't know. But you know right now if you either got some bad. I read if you ain't nothing but a button goat, amen. Oh no, you the Lord done led you in the wrong place, man. Some plain preaching's about to get real plain to you. Boy, this power of plain preaching. And what it has the power to show. Matter of fact, you can go over to 1 Corinthians. I love what the Apostle Paul 
in his writing to the church at Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Boy, I tell you what, Brother David, you bless my heart tonight. And, and I ain't never seen a preacher that didn't think he couldn't sing and a singer that didn't think he couldn't preach. But I have seen some preachers that I wasn't real crazy about hearing them sing. Amen. But I liked it tonight when the preaching got bigger in Brother David than the singing was. And I'm telling you what, God used him tonight to set our hearts toward worship as he stood with an open Bible. What was that old boy doing, Brother Steve? Honey, he was preaching, he was preaching, he was preaching. What seems like foolishness to the whole world. Verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. That's what some of you need to, some of you old goats tonight need to get dumb. Amen. And will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Some of you proud folk tonight that think you a little better than we are. Let me tell you something, honey. If not for the grace of God, we'd all be out yonder in the road ditch tonight. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Here the Lord Jesus is surrounded by those who don't believe. And what does he do? He goes into a very plain but powerful message that will reveal who they are. Hear me tonight, honey. Plain preaching has a power in it that will take the Word of God. It'll turn it into several things. It'll turn it into a road map. Amen. Do you know the Word of God's a road map? Any of y'all ever tried to read a map? These men will not say they have. You women have tried to make us read one because we ain't never been lost. Amen. A map will do you absolutely no good till you find out where you are on that map. Honey, the Word of God will be a map to you. It'll show you where you are in this life. It'll show you the direction that you need to go. It'll not only be a map, it'll be a mirror. Amen. It'll be that that'll let you see you like nothing else will let you see you. Boy, that plain preaching will begin to show you who you are. It'll reveal to you if you're a sheep or a goat. Or if you're a goat tonight, I pray, I pray that plain preaching is about to pierce your heart. If you're a sheep tonight, I pray plain preaching is about to bless you from your hoofs to your ears. Amen. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Can't get much easier than that, can it? Can't get much plainer than that, can it? Let's go a little deeper in that. Hear me, honey. The sheep favor their shepherd. They favor him. Let me say first off, they favor his proclamation. My sheep hear my voice. What plain preaching will do tonight, it'll ask you what calls are you answering in these days? What voices are you responding to? If you're one of His sheep, you'll favor His call. Matter of fact, He said in verse number 5 of John chapter 10, A stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of the stranger. Boy, a good friend of mine done gone on to be with the Lord. Brother Joe Tudor, he went to the Holy Land back in the 70s and he he loved to tell me about that trip and and he came back and he told me one evening he said we had ended up in a little village there and he said it was about dark and and said the guide had us on a hill and he was going to let us watch the sun go down there on that hill he said it got right before dark and he said I looked and and said over the hill came a shepherd had about a hundred sheep with him said over this hill come a shepherd had about a hundred sheep with him over this hill come a shepherd had about a hundred sheep with him he said there was a little pond down there he said all them sheep man cut out to that water went to get them a drink and he said I sitting there thinking my soul what a mess how in the world are them shepherds going to ever get all them sheep divided back up when, when they go to leave here he said I looked at my guide and I said man what's them boys going to do them sheep done got all mixed up said the guide said you 
just watch and see what happens. He said them shepherds stood there, visited a while, let their sheep drink. Said the shepherds just began to make their way off. Said they didn't even look back toward the water hole. Said one of them got way up a hill. Said he called out, Coo-wee! Coo-wee! He said when he done that, there was 300 sheep there. Said a hundred of them raised their head up, got their eye on the shepherd, and come out of the crowd. Amen. They made their way toward their shepherd. He said about that time that other went his way and said he stopped and said, Eeyaw! Eeyaw! Said when he did, a hundred more sheep throwed their head up and looked. He cut out toward that shepherd. Said that's all he had to do was make a call. Oh, Brother Joe said, I couldn't help it, man. Said I was sitting there, I just had to see. He said, I just had to see. Said I got up and said, Hey, sheep! Hey! He said that last shepherd, he didn't have to call. He didn't have to holler. Said them last hundred heard that voice of that stranger. Said, man, they come up from there heading back toward the shepherd. A stranger's call put fear in them. Boy, I've been a scratching around on that, man. I preached this at my church a couple of weeks ago and I got to scratching around on that. About how those sheep said they would lift their head. They would look to their shepherd and they would follow him. Well, I believe this week we've all got to lift our heads up. Get our eyes back on our shepherd. Boy, we've started following him fresh and new. Then I went a little deeper. I I thought, my soul, what about a sheep that won't... Is there ever a sheep that won't respond to the voice of his shepherd? Man, I got into Sheepology 101 the last few weeks. Man, I've been digging in on them sheep. I discovered a lot of things about sheep. They tell me there's only one reason why a sheep won't respond to his shepherd. They said a sheep that won't answer his shepherd's call is a very sick sheep. And they said that sheep have a gland in them that when they get sick enough, it attacks their central nervous system. And because of their condition, they cannot distinguish the shepherd's call from another call, and it becomes deceived. And you do find sheep following of the voices of those who are not their shepherd. And I don't believe we've ever seen a day like this day who those folk in our Baptist churches sitting on our Baptist pews, sitting under the plain preaching of the Word of God Sunday after Sunday, and they tell us on Sunday that they're a sheep, but if you watch their walk the rest of the week, they got a lot of goat ways in them. Amen. Hear me, honey. If your voice, if your ears don't respond to the call of the shepherd, there's one or two things. You're either very, very sick or you a goat. Plain preaching will put a stop to all doubt. You're either very, very sick or you're very, very lost. Hear me tonight, honey. I'm telling you some plain preachings fixing to tell you what voice are you responding to. Now, I just got to give you what I give my church. I know my people, but y'all a lot more spiritual than them I know. But I've never seen a day, Brother Augustine, where saved folk who claim that their sheep are following so many strange voices. Now, y'all don't have this problem in Texas because y'all a lot more spiritual than we are. But I'm going to tell you something. I, I've got a church. I've got folk in my church. They respond to the voices of baseball and soccer coaches. They respond to the cheerleader coaches. And they follow the voices. I'm, I'm talking about God help me. I'm going to stand at my post. I'm going to preach. When we hit the judgment seat of Christ, I don't want nobody that's in this meeting this week to point their finger at me and say, that boy right there didn't tell me just the way the book wrote it. No blood on my hands. If God gives me an opportunity, I'm thinking to point you to Christ. But Brother Shannon, a lot of my folk, 
They'll sit under the preaching, plain preaching, and they'll amen me, and they'll hold their hand up, and man, they'll shout to victory. But then to watch them, they'll respond to some strange voices. Now, I know y'all know y'all do this. Let me tell you something about responding to the voices of your ball coaches. There ain't nothing wrong with ball. I love playing ball. Love watching ball. Love football. Love, love all of that. But let me tell you something. I don't care if Junior's little league coach told you he's got a good curveball. If he was much a coach, he wouldn't be coaching Junior and little league at curveball. I know this is going to be a shock to a lot of you. Junior probably is not going to pitch for the Rangers. There's no need in you trying to relive your life through Junior. You couldn't throw a curveball. He can't either, amen. But I'm so amazed at the deception of mamas and daddies who say, Brother Steve, we own the traveling team now. Junior made the traveling team. And they're so excited. And all I can see is you're fixing to raise this young'un saying it's more important to be at a ball field on Sunday than to be at the house of God. You've only got so long. You better put something in Junior. It's going to ground him. Bring me your young'uns when they're 16 year old. Say, what am I going to do with him, preacher? Makes me want to slap somebody, amen. I say, man, I poured my heart out. I preached my guts out to you. I run, I spit, I stomp. And what you do, you listen to a strange voice. You ain't never heard the shepherd call the sheep away from the fold, man. You hear me tonight? You want some victory in your house? Change your goat ways or get saved. Oh, Lord, some of you's tore up now. Brother Steve, Brother Steve, we didn't know it'd be this plain. They didn't either. Voices that we follow, oh, we let coaches. You either sick or you lost. You know, we're living a day where we listen to what children say. We follow the voice. Our homes are so out of order now. It's actually said in the homes of folk who claim their sheep, there'll be this kind of conversation on Sunday morning or Saturday night. Somebody will ask a nine or ten year old, do we want to go to church in the morning? Are you crazy? What are you doing giving a child a front office in your house anyway, Amen. Well, no, they probably don't want to go to church in the morning. You're going to base what they want on raising them and the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Brother Steve, what are you saying? Hear me, honey. Strange voices we go after. Our culture, it's got a voice of its own. Boy, we're living in a day where more folk are going to hell in style than they ever have. Boats and beach houses. Timeshares. Oh, preacher... We're going to miss a few Sundays now. We've invested in that. Now, I don't believe God would have me spent that money if He didn't mean for me to go enjoy it. You go to tempting God like that and see how long your money holds out. It ain't your money no way. It's His money. You ain't got nothing here tonight except from the grace of God. You rode up what He bought for you. You sitting there with all what He give you. You going to start being run by those things responding to that voice? I just want to ask my folks sometime, well, what about if I come in and say, now y'all, I'm going to miss a few Sundays this year. You're either sick or you're a goat. Companions, boy, the voices of our companions. There's a very common phrase nowadays, come on, man. You go to trying to tell somebody 
You're going to be faithful to the shepherd and you're going to be faithful to that that he's called you to and, and you love the Lord and you're going to follow him. You're going to hear things like, come on, man. or Man, you're taking that religious stuff too far. or Man, you're nothing but a fanatic. You know what I've undecided a fanatic is? That's somebody that loves Jesus more than I do. Amen. I want everybody in here who you've been listening to. When you hear a call, what have you been picking your head up? Who you been following? Favor his proclamation. They favor his presence. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Boy, sheep love to be in the presence of the shepherd. You know one of the greatest evidences that you're saved is that you have a thirst for God. A real desire to be in His presence. I, 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 I visit with folk and I've got, I've got single. I've got men in my church that their wives won't come to church with them. And I've got wives that their husbands won't come to church. I've got kids that their mamas and daddies won't come. And I'll go and see them. And I, I'll go and try to find out what's going on. And, and everybody say, you can't find nobody lost no more. And everybody will tell you they're a sheep. You can't find a goat out yonder in the world, man. But you watch their ways. And you listen to what's coming out of them. And they say things like, well, preacher, I can make it just as well right here. Or, Brother Steve, them crowds just really, they just really get to me and mess me up. And, Brother, but, but I, I see them at Walmart all the time. You can't get a bigger crowd than Walmart, man. And then it's amazing when you're either a backslid sheep or a stinking billy goat, who the folks got to run you up on at Walmart? Y'all ever been trying to get away from God's folk and go to Walmart? And every aisle you start down, got to have somebody in your path that's going to bring the Word of God to you? You'd almost think the Holy Spirit can go anywhere, amen. Boy, they'll favor His proclamation. They'll favor His presence. Look at Psalm 42. I love these verses. Psalm 42 and verse 1. As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, which a multitude that kept the holy day. Psalm 63, 8 says, My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. I, I love where he said, as the heart, uh, as he panteth. And, and that heart is out of the gazelle family, which is out of the deer family. And I ain't ever hunted no gazelles, but I've hunted a lot of deers. And to watch a deer, there's nothing more peaceful. When you see a deer and you're on your stand and and there's nothing there, and you look away, and you look back, and there, maybe two or three, it's just like they've just appeared. And there, there's nothing as smooth, Brother Augustine, uh, as it makes its way through the woods. And, and it's almost like there's, it's such an ease. But then at the same time, you let somebody pull up and, and drop the tailgate and let them hounds out. Amen. And when the dogs get after them, it seems like that life that was so in control gets so out of control in that deer. And, and when the dogs get after him, he, he begins to run, and he, he begins to run, and he begins to run. And the dogs have got him on the run. And, and I've seen them when they've run as far as they can run, and they stop and you see them, and they're... Anybody that's ever run dogs knows this. You want to kill a big buck and you get some dogs on him, you go to some water, man. He's headed there. Because he knows if a dog's is after him, if he can get to the water, 
It's going to be a place of provision for his thirst and it's going to be a place of protection from those things that are after him. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you there's some power and some plain preaching. Thank God tonight, if you've got a heart for God, you, you've got a pant in you that wants to be around God, to be in his presence. And, and when the dogs of this world get after you, you want to get to the water, man. You want to get to where you can get some provision and some protection. I've never understood sheep that didn't want to be around the shepherd. That makes no sense to me. There's no logic in that. Sheep want to be in the presence of their shepherd. If you don't, you're either sick or you're a goat. I don't know how much plainer I can get with that. If you sat around dreading going to church, there's something wrong with you. Man, if you could have seen me in 1979, when I walked through the front door of North Puntock Attendance Center on my way out the back door. But that morning I spotted a little brunette girl leaned against the lockers. Had on a pair of white jeans. Glory to God. I said, who is that? One of my buddies said, that's Twyla Spears. Now, if you could see my wife and some of you, I wear it married way above my head. Amen. Like most every man in here, married way above our head. I'm going to tell you, I got, I got in a pursuit to be in her presence. And, and boy, from 1979 till June of 1981, there began a courtship. There began a pursuit for her presence. I was raised in Ecru, Mississippi. She lived in Thaxton, Mississippi, about 10 miles from my house. But honey, I'm telling you, there was a pursuit for her presence. You give me half an opportunity, I was going to be where she was. Amen. I was going to do whatever it took. Honey, the U.S. mail didn't have nothing on me. Rain, shine, sleet, or snow. How's it going, man? For someone to say you can't go, I'd say you crazy, man. I'm a-going. For someone to say it's too bad, there's too much going on, I'd say, well, it may be bad here, but if I can just get over there where she is, I'll feel better when I get in her presence. Hey, honey, if you don't want to be here, you're either sick or you're a goat. Well, they'll favor his proclamation. They'll favor his presence. This and right hymns fixing to get up bad close to the corn. Amen. They'll favor his people. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. No singular tense there. We find a flock. And sheep realize that they love to be around other sheep. They love to be around those who are of their own kind, those who have the same shepherd. Healthy sheep realize they're a lot better off together than apart. They realize if they ever go astray from the flock and from the shepherd, they put themselves in grave danger. 21 times in the New Testament, it tells us to love one another. Hear me, honey, I'm afraid. This is where a lot of folk who claim they got saved, but when they begin to look at the evidence of salvation, don't tell me you love Jesus and you don't love other people. Sheep have a spirit about them. They've got a spirit of meekness. They've got a spirit of gentleness. Sheep hate contention. You ain't never heard nobody say, let's go downtown tonight. They're having a sheep fight. <laughs> sheep don't try to destroy each other. A sheep is not a goat. A goat loves a fight. 
A goat loves contention. Matter of fact, you put a goat in with a bunch of sheep, he'll make out like he's going to make it all right, but he'll be set out on one thing, and that's to tear up the sheep. A goat will keep things in an uproar all the time. You ever get a goat in a church? They'll cause a ruckus among the sheep. Plain preaching. If every time the church goes to do something and there's a hundred folk for it and you against anything, you better check and see if you bad or if you button. Amen. Something wrong with you, man. You either sick or you a goat. But I'm going to tell you what the devil will do. He'll have a hundred sheep and a flock all happy with the shepherd. But you can take one goat and get everybody's attention on the goat instead of them being sheep. I done about decided I'm sick of trying to please the goats. You ain't going to please the goat. So for all my pastor brethren here tonight, all my preachers, I pray God to give you some victory. Honey, get your mind off of goats. Stay with the sheep. Tell you what you do with a goat, you have a barbecue every now and then, hey man. Preacher friend of mine back home, he had a man in the church that was always giving him fits, always calling him, always complaining, was against everything, kept everybody in the flock stirred up. Finally, my old buddy done had all he could stand. He went and seen the man. The man said, Preacher, I'm proud you here. I got a few things I want to tell you. He said, I come to give you notice. I went to praying this morning for God to either kill you, move you, or save you. He said, that old goat said, Now, wait a minute, Preacher. Well, he's saying, but man, time's too short, honey. Time is too short. You want a miserable life, you make this life about you. Or you want to serve Christ, you make it about others. Goats are all about those around, sheep are all about those around them in the flock. Plain preacher, I never understand. Those who claim to be a sheep, but they love to run with the goats. They miss being with the shepherd and the other sheep to go out and run with the goats. Do you like it better there in the flock with the shepherd? Or do you fit in better out yonder at the club or at the or wherever those goats congregate up at the goat roping? Amen. Never seen a sheep tell another sheep, let's go the goat roping, man. John 13, 35 said, By this all men shall know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another. Baptists are notorious for business meetings. Started in Acts chapter 6 when there arose a great murmuring in the Baptist church. You don't never see one sheep hollering at another sheep. They hate contention. I told my church about three weeks ago. I said, I pray God leave me here until Jesus comes. He may move me next week, man. That goes to the territory. You don't know. I said, but I pray this. I pray there'll be enough God on somebody if anything ever gets out of hand and anybody stands in this church and raises their voice to somebody else. Somebody will stop and say, let's have a word of closing prayer because God just walked out of here. Right. Didn't get saved till I was 24 year old. Didn't bother me a bit in the world to go to a dead church full of goats or full of sheep that was so sick they was worth nothing in the cause for Christ. 
But when my wife finally did talk me into going somewhere, she would try to carry me somewhere that had a touch of God on it. Amen. Man, you get a goat walking in amongst a bunch of sheep, he knows he's a stinking goat. Amen. I don't care how he acts. He knows he's a goat, and you know tonight. Say, Brother Steve, I wish you'd hurry. This ain't no good. Well, it's fixing to get better. Amen. They told Jesus, tell us plainly. Remove our doubt. Tell us plainly. He said, it can't get no plainer than this. Sheep love their shepherd. They favor his proclamation. They favor his presence. They favor his people. They favor his path. He said, they follow me. They're going the way that the shepherd wants them to go. Sheep don't like to go anywhere that the shepherd doesn't lead them to because the shepherd has their best interest at heart. And you'll find no sheep deliberately leaving the path that his shepherds got him on. Boy, the psalmist in the 23rd Psalm, he said this of the shepherd, He leadeth me beside the still waters. They tell me that sheep don't like to be around anything uh, that's going to uh, upset them in a way that, that, that messes up that that's going on on the inside of them. He said, He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. You see, sheep, they prefer His fat path because there's something about a sheep. It has no sense of direction. Now I said a sheep won't willingly leave the path of the shepherd. But he will oftentimes leave the path just because he's a sheep. Sheep are very dumb animals. Can I get a witness? Amen. You've never been to the circus and seen the sheep show. There's no sheep tamers. There's no sheep jumping through burning rings. Sheep are not standing on their hooves. Dancing around. Sheep are dumb. But they have no sense of direction. But what sheep will do they won't willingly leave the shepherd, but what they will do, they're prone to wander. He'll wander away from the shepherd, not even realizing he's wandering. And his wandering will come from one thing. It will come from his appetite. And the way a sheep gets away from his shepherd is one blade of grass at a time. It's a very slow process. When a sheep loses his way from his shepherd, it'll be a little nibble. It'll be a little... You've never been by a pasture and seen a flock of sheep standing there and then all of a sudden one of them breaking out running. It's not in them to do that. It'll be one nibble, one bite. It'll begin to look a little greener over there. Could I get a witness, Satan? If I could just go from this pasture to that pasture. Boy, that looks sweeter over there. That looks like it'd be better over there. And the whole flock there, maybe, maybe that, that, the whole flock has something about sheep. One sheep is dumb as another sheep. Matter of fact, a coyote can come into a flock of sheep and be killing a sheep and eating a sheep and them other sheep are standing there. Man. <laughs> got no sense of danger. They've got no, they've got no sense of direction. They're, they're very dumb animals. I'm telling you, honey, I believe God sent a word for somebody tonight. You're not meaning to leave the shepherd. You're not meaning to get out of the flock, but things are coming into your life. And one nibble at a time, you're beginning to stray. You're beginning to wander. And hear me tonight, a lost sheep has no way of finding his way back to the shepherd. A lost sheep has no ability to get back home. If not for the shepherd, a sheep would stay lost. He would never get back to the fold. But thank God, we do have a shepherd. 
We got a shepherd just says he's not only the shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. He's not another one like him. Oh, let me praise my shepherd's name tonight. What are you saying, preacher? Above all else, sheep favor the pardon of their shepherd. Luke chapter 15. I'm fixing to get through. We're going to get down to goats and sheep. Luke chapter 15. Sheep have no way of getting back to the shepherd. So thank God the shepherd will go after the sheep. Verse 4 of Luke 15. If you're there, say amen. Amen. If you ain't got these verses marked in your Bible... Be a good night for you to get this laid down, my poor dumb sheep, you. <laughs> what a man are you having a hundred sheep? If he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, It didn't say if he finds it, he might not find it. He hopes he finds it. It says the shepherd that goes looking finds what he's looking for. You may have come here tonight so sick, so wandering, so backslid, you didn't think you could ever get back to the fold again. Guess what? You can't. But thank God there's one coming looking for you. When he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Don't say when he found it that he gave it a good cussing. Don't say that he fussed at it. Don't say that he gave it a beating. Don't even say he asked it why he strayed. He's the shepherd. He knows his sheep. He knows why it strayed. Says he finds him, lays him on his shoulders. He's rejoicing. Get ready, Brother Jimmy. If I wasn't so tired, I'd make a lap with you. And when he cometh home, and when he cometh home, and when he cometh home, some of you ain't been home in a long time. Some of you goats ain't got no place to call home because you ain't responded to the shepherd. When he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Hear me, honey. The devil's telling you it's over. You can't have nothing again. Do you know if you'll come back, if you'll just stop where you are, let the shepherd get you. They'll call time out in heaven tonight, man, and rejoice. When he cometh home, where there's been separation, now there's restoration. It says the shepherd tells everybody. Boy, I've had a time this week. My folk been blowing my phone up, man. What's happening, preacher? I told my folk, I said, man, I got there Sunday night. I said, I went in that place. I said, I walked behind that pulpit. I seen all them people about past smooth out. Fear gripped me. Then thank God, an old dumb sheep had a shepherd that reached down and picked me up. Boy, I began to tell everybody about how great the shepherd is. One of the greatest joys I've had this week is letting my folk know what a move of God I've seen here in this place for the victory. Honey, I'll tell you what the shepherd will do. He'll brag on the sheep, man. He loves the sheep. 
All through the Old Testament, we found sheep dying for the shepherd. Then we get to the New Testament, we find the shepherd dying for the sheep. I found my sheep which was lost. He ain't rejoicing over your sin that led you astray. He's rejoicing over the finished work of Calvary that keeps you a sheep. Man, I've heard messages preached on this. I heard somebody give an illustration one time, Brother Augustine. Said there's some sheep that are so bad to stray that sometime when a shepherd finds them, he'll break their leg to keep them from straying. Now that sounded good. The whole, it said the shepherd then will have to spend so much time with that sheep as that leg heals and, and all these things. And man, God give me this message. I was at my boy's house about a month ago on a Friday morning about 5 o'clock sitting there on that porch. Man, I was knowing I was going to preach it. I thought, right here is where I'm going to tell about that broke leg. I'm going to drive that point home, man, right here. The Holy Spirit said, Show me in my word where you ever see me breaking a sheep's leg. Well, I got to doing some research on them shepherds. They asked a lot of shepherds about the myth Does a shepherd ever break a sheep's leg? They said, Oh, no. A shepherd would never break the leg of his sheep. Plain preaching. And then I got, I about had me a spell, Brother Shannon. I was so thankful. I didn't have to read verse 5. And when he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulder and then took a hammer and crushed his leg. Glory to God, rejoicing sounds better than crushing a leg, don't you? Matter of fact, if he was in the leg crushing business, we'd all be limping around here tonight. He ain't in the crushing business. He's in the restoring business, honey. He'll put you on your shoulder. He'll be happy. He'll carry you all the way back. But I did find this out about sheep. They have a photographic memory. What they see, they will remember. I preached this at my church. One of my men came up to me and he said, Brother Steve, he said, I raised sheep one time. He said, I tell you what you can do. You can carry a broom out in the pasture and lay it down. He said, the first sheep walks up that broom and jumps it. He said, every sheep in the flock will jump that broom. He said, I don't tell you one more. You can go back and pick the broom up and carry it to the truck. He said, when they come back through, they'll jump where the broom was and every one of them will jump the same place. (laughs) And I found this out about those shepherds in the Middle East. They said, a shepherd doesn't have to break a sheep's leg. That stray said, said, uh, breaking a sheep's leg is not going to stop it from straying. Said, you're just going to make him limp worse when he strays. Said, but this is what a sheep will do from his memory and from that, from what his eyes see. And he remembers, a sheep will remember what has hurt him. Said, if somebody is ugly to a sheep, that sheep will remember who was ugly to him. And he will avoid getting around that one that hurt him. Said, but a sheep also remembers his shepherd and who loves him. And when he sees his shepherd, it will so move him to get to his shepherd. What are you saying, Brother Steve? Honey, if he ever comes and gets you, if he ever comes to where you strayed to, if he ever comes to where you are, finds you, picks you up, puts you on his shoulders, you won't forget that look. You won't forget that shepherd. Matter of fact, what you'll remember is that country over there that hurts you, and you won't be wanting to go back there. You'll be wanting to stay with him. I'm talking about just some plain preaching. And by the time he got through, 
The sheep knowed who was sheep. And the goats knowed who was goats. The sheep who loved the shepherd, loved his presence, had a hunger for him, loved to be around his people, loved his call, they were very content to be with their shepherd. By the time he got through preaching, a backslid sheep knowed he's in a mess. Knew he was very sick. Heads bowed and eyes closed all over this building. Sheep or goats? Heavenly Father, we thank you.